This is the <coughs> second level. Uh, the employment cycle. Um, I don't know about this video. Uh, I wish I had a better one. I don't know if you'd love it, but the, like I said, the notes are okay. The guy's voice is like rang, 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 Australian kind of rang, 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 rang. It's very hard to. Uh, uh, we managed the relationship between the employers and the relationship between the uh, it's quite, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's just my Americanness that I cannot understand him. Uh, but I think for a teacher, he should speak more clearly. <clears throat> uh, okay, so uh, I want to make a note here, though, when we first start. It says BCE Business Management here, Employment Cycle Induction. I want to talk about induction, but I don't believe this is the maintenance phase. According to Western Australia and our syllabus, there are four, one, two, three, four elements to the employment cycle, and maintenance is number three. Right now, in the Western Australian style, we're in number two, which is called development. So development is not maintenance in Western Australia, but apparently in Victoria, Australia, it is part of maintenance. Most of development happens in two, it's much simpler than the steps for acquisition. Acquisition is complicated, there are many steps. Uh, but development basically has two main qualities, which are induction and training. I'm on page 108. 108. What shall we have in your book? <clears throat> the definition of induction is to, it's process. It's basically like getting you into the family, right? Having you join the, the organization to understand um, what it is about. So there's, because there's more than just what you do in the job, there's a culture. So it's a way to introduce staff to the culture. It makes it easy to remember the word induction because it sounds like the word introduction, and that's basically what it is. It's an introduction to the organization. Induction, introduction, makes it easy to follow. So, um, let me read the book definition, then we'll look at this video for a second, and then we'll go back through the items. Induction of a new employee involves making the employee familiar with their workplace to ensure that they start the job in the best manner possible and to provide essential information about their new workplace so they can navigate. A good induction ensures that the employee feels very welcome and they can see how their work and career goals, also their future, so it's a little bit about the future but mostly about the introduction, are a good fit with the organizational mission and culture. I think that is the point of the induction. You should highlight the word culture it also ensures that occupational health and safety are clear, as well as emergencies and other procedures that may serve us in um, some kind of emergency situation, right? Like just the general stuff. You can imagine, and it would probably, I'll, I'll make this a question for the classroom, is what would be a good induction program, or yeah, what would be a good induction program for Saigon International College? So what would you put into your idea about that induction? Um, you're a new, for a new student, obviously, not an employee. <clears throat> you wouldn't know that for an employee. Used to year 12. Um, so it's a similar kind of thing. You might have done one in year 7 also, where you, know, you walked around the school to show where everything is, uh, gone through the, the um, some school rules, some responsibilities you have, all the policies, those type of things. It's the same thing with an organisation. So the things that it can involve, involve going through policies, procedures, the history of the organisation, the type of culture. Oh, well, all that stuff. 
Induction example. <clears throat> okay, so um, first I'll go over the possible items. Notice how it says possible. Not every company is the same. Uh, if you're a grab bike driver, I bet that would be an interesting induction program. We could also imagine that, right? Do you have to have driver training or just a driver license? Does the vehicle need to be checked for its safety? Doesn't look like. What about the crazy helmets? <laughs> There's a lot of items there that you might, you know, that consist, you know, think about safety. Um, it's a fairly loose organization. Possible items to include in a staff induction. The history of the company. If you're going to work for a company like a Heineken or maybe Harley Davidson or somebody who has, or Nike or whatever, there has a, a company that has a very rich history, then uh, usually an organization wants to build some pride in their employees when they first come into the organization. So it's like, you know, they show you, this is the Hall of Fame. This is, you know, all the awards that we won for X and Y and Z. Uh, this is our original director. These are the, you know, this was the one who invented the formula for Heineken beer or whatever. So they'll teach you a little bit about the history. Um, you know, they'll give you the mission statement. They'll, you know, talk about, you know, here in this company, we aim to do X, Y, and Z and to, you know, create relationships and blah, blah, blah. So we'll talk about ethics, maybe, as well. So you'll be introduced to the culture. <clears throat> then, as you know already, you know from organizational charts, you'll get to see an organizational chart. You'll see who's who, what are the departments of the company, uh, how is the structure organized, is it uh, tall or flat, or is your department tall or flat, <laughs> and the people involved. Uh, they'll take you around to the different locations in the building, let you know which zones you're allowed to go into. Maybe there's some ac problem with access to some zones. Uh, emergency procedures, security, so that also means what? You'll get a passcode, to maybe a card for you to um, know where to go. Actually, that's not true. That's not for emergency procedures. Emergency procedures, that's for security. Emergency procedures, know how to go where. Grievance, grievances are complaints. So if you have problems in the office or something happens, discrimination, harassment, or any other problems in the office, you'll know who you can talk to about your problems. They may go over career paths, which, um, you know, if you stay with the organization for a long period of time, which, uh, what are the possibilities starting in your position? Um, they'll outline the training and development, give you some idea of what HR is going to be looking at in terms of KPIs and performance review. A mentor. A mentor is somebody who is uh, uh, experienced an experienced employee in the organization. So what they'll do with a mentor is they'll say, okay, this is not the person to complain to, this is Bob. Bob is the person you talk to, like he's been here a long time. If you have any questions, ask Bob. Bob will be there for you. And Bob will know that he's supposed to mentor you and uh, you know, say, hey, what's up? When you come into his office and try to help you solve the little decision-making and technical problems that you have. So that's mentoring. If there are any awards or incentive programs, employee of the month, etc., you will be informed about what kind of uh, achievements you can achieve. And maybe that has to do with bonuses as well. General administration. Where do you supply your documents? Where do you check in to come to work? Um, uh, you know, who do you have to know for phone calls and secretaries and administration and paperwork? Uh, what kind of restricted area passes, meaning that you have like your, your, your car keys or whatever it is. 
Uh, policies on IT, okay, protection of data, what is the story, are you allowed to bring USBs to work, uh, who has access to your personal data, are you allowed to use Facebook at work, yada, 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 what are your IT, um, what kind of IT policies do they have, dress code, what do you have to wear, you have that as students. Uh, policies for lateness, holidays, and sickness, so uh, leave policies basically, so just to make sure that you understand the limits of the, uh, what's expected from the company. Where you get paid, who to talk to when there's issues about pay, pay and personnel systems, that's the HR department. Uh, do you need any tools or protective equipment or additional equipment or markers for your whiteboard? Uh, where you can find them. So it'll show you where all your equipment and your tools are. Uh, show you where the Nyabe Sin is and the lunchroom and a whole tour of the facility in general. So after you have that big day or two of induction, you should have a pretty good sense that people are just going to say hi to you, recognize that you're like a new person, and that they will be friendly to you as you go around the company. Let's look at Zappos company and their induction program. This world famous for um, their induction program. So first of all, they sell shoes. Well, they sell a lot of other things, but they initially started just by selling shoes online. So they're an online business, and um, their main focus, and you can see down the bottom there, it says powered by service. Their main focus is customer service, which can be quite difficult to have with an online business. They don't have stores where they can, where you can interact with the staff. Um, so they rely heavily on a call centre to provide their service for them. Now. With Zappos, they've got obviously lots of employees. This is just a uh, picture of someone in accounting. They've got people in warehouses, people in marketing, and obviously the call centre. And look, thousands of other employees, thousands of people. Uh, they've got a setup similar to Google. So uh, they're quite large. But let's just for now say that you know, there's a variety of employees that need to that come into the organisation and they need to go through an induction. Now they give a, each employee a four-week induction. It does not matter whether you're in a call centre, it does not matter whether you're in accounting, no matter where you are, if you're going in as a manager, it doesn't matter. You go every employee goes through a four-week induction. And so some of the things that they do, they take you on tour, they, give, they show you where your office is, um, all those kind of general things, so uh, where the employee gets a real feel for what the organisation stands for. But then they also, go through the core values. Now, Zappos has got 10 core values. You can look them up in your own time. Um, they're quite unique, actually. But, so they go through those kind of things. That's the kind of culture sort of uh, aspect of it. And funnily enough, every single employee spends two weeks in the call centre, whether they are never going to spend another time, uh, week in the call centre at all. They ensure, because their whole culture is based on customer service, they make sure that every single employee is there answering phones. So when they enter the organisation, they say to them, right, we're going to give you two weeks, we're all going to see what, our, what we stand for. Whether you're ever there again or not, if you're in accounting, you might never work in a call centre again. But they want you to understand the actual real core value and what their uh, culture is based on. So every employee gets a feel for the importance of customer service. After that, after the four weeks, they've paid you for four weeks of induction, then they give you $2,000, they offer you $2,000 to leave the organisation and never come back. So they say, we'll give you $2,000 today. Oh, there you go. That's kind of a weird one, right? We'll train you for... Uh for, uh, we'll train you for whatever, and then at that point we'll let you go away. And uh, and if you uh, if you don't like what you've seen here, we're no, no problem. We don't care. We it's fine. You can go, and uh, we'll accept that you are unhappy with what you saw. And it's but they're trusting in themselves. They're believing in themselves. They're believing that uh, they are going to convince you that it's a good place to work 
and then as a result of that, then you're going to want to stay. So they give you this last offer, like, okay, that's fine, you put in your time, here's 2000 to leave if you really think it's not for you. We, we believe that if you want to stay, if you don't take the money, then that means that you really liked what you saw. If you leave our organization and never return. Um, and so what that does is it gets the employee thinking and saying, well, am I here just for a paycheck? Here I can get, I've been paid for four weeks, plus I can get another $2,000. Or do I really value the, um, this organization and what they stand for? Is this a place I really want to work at? And that has a major impact. So that is an extended induction that really helps our boss um, embed their culture, customer service into their culture, which is really important. Um, and as a result, you have employees that really value the organization, they work well together, and this is an organization that within nine years has gone from zero turnover to one billion dollars in turnover. So it's an amazing company. So just to recap, we're selling in maintenance space. I'll just leave that up there. I think that you pretty much know that already. <clears throat> but it's a good example. And uh, it's a way to set a bond between the company and the employees when they first come into an organization. Uh, maybe I'll come up with another one. Sometimes they have videos, right? They have like training, you have to sit there and watch all these videos about uh, what it's like to work in the company. Um, checklist, elements, I don't, I don't think I'll show this whole thing, but... <coughs> how you operate, what to expect from us, and what we expect from you. At the end of this induction... Actually, I like the select skirt. I hope you'll enjoy it, and you'll see our contact details at the end of this video, or in the link below. Thank you for watching. Hello, and welcome to Radco. As a new employee, you are required to complete the short induction to bring you up to speed with how you operate, what to expect from us, and what we expect from you. At the end of this induction, there'll be a few quick questions to ensure you've understood what's been delivered. Ready? Okay, let's go. Here at Airco, customer service has always been our priority, and with this in mind, we ask that you always be polite and courteous to customers and everyone around you, so this means no swearing in public. Another important thing. <laughs> That's the first thing. No swearing in public. I love it. So good. The purpose here at Airco is to deliver a first time fix solution. So if you can fix something there and then to get the job done, do it as soon as possible. We're all working to keep the customer happy wherever possible. As an engineer, you'll be expected to wear your uniform with pride. This is how you should look. Standard green uniform with black safety boots. Smart and professional with no caps or white shoes. We're engineers, not rappers. You'll also be issued with your own PP bag. This will contain a hard hat. PPE, you might learn that word recently, means uh, protective equipment. Uh, and that's what they always complain they don't have in the USA. <clears throat> So here we have engineers, these are, they're calling them engineers, they're people who fix air conditioners, uh, and they have their protective equipment. <clears throat> Ear defenders, gloves, safety goggles, barriers. Make sure that you relate to these whenever in contact with any types of chemicals to ensure the safety of yourself and your surroundings. Safety, with chemicals. A set of digital scales. A set of vacuum pumps. 
floor equipment. Nitrogen pressure to communication between engineers and office based support staff. Therefore, it's vital that you consistently check and respond to emails, phone calls, and voicemails. This also works the other way around as well, so don't hesitate to get into the office if you're unsure about anything to do with the works you're required to do. We're here to help and always respond quickly and efficiently. On top of this, every month we hold an open forum meeting for engineers to suggest improvements and adjustments, so feel free to take part. Meet the team! Now, you're probably going to want to know who your head office support staff are and what they do. So, let's take a look. Andy Stubbs, Service Coordinator. John Fitzgerald, Maintenance Coordinator. Matthew Baskin, Procurement Officer. Adam Mitchell, Procurement Officer. Alex Steele, Maintenance Coordinator. Veronica Green, Office Administrator. And Joe Oxley, Service Supervisor. These are the main people that will make up your team. The first thing we want to cover is your working hours. Yes, I'm afraid that if you will pay, you're going to have to turn up. As I'm sure you're already aware, your basic hours are from 8.30 a.m. Alright, yeah, we know. So what else they have? Responsibility, what is that? Job logic? I don't know what that means. What's job logic? Must be some computer program software. Sit in your timesheet on Friday every week, don't forget. <coughs> Always get four weeks notice of holiday. <coughs> Family emergencies, health and safety, working at home, all these things. And uh, driving, don't drive too much. Tools or wear anything that isn't part of your uniform. As part of your job, occasionally you'll end up travelling a lot. If you ever start to feel tired about driving, pull over, have a quick rest, and get yourself a cup of coffee. While it's important that you get your job done, it's more important that you stay safe. Everyone is using social media these days, and it's a great way of keeping in touch with friends and family. However, it's important to take care to be seen as a professional in every aspect of our work. So we have some rules regarding social media, and they're pretty simple. Don't use social media at work, and don't post anything about Airtel or its customers that could bring either companies into disrepute. Alright, so there you go. <clears throat> they have videos in their induction. Then, besides induction, we have training. Uh, once we introduce you to the company, it might take four weeks. Uh, for Zappos, like they said, uh, the, the part about their training that they uh, really focus on is customer service. <clears throat> so even if you're working in other departments, you understand what the customer service workers do because you did the job for two weeks yourself and you know the kind of questions that customers ask and the things that are going to be of interest to them. So you can actually think about the customers more even if you're working in the warehouse. <clears throat> so I would say even though that's the induction, it's still part of training. 109, training is the set of activities required to ensure that an employee has the required knowledge and skills to perform the job role. Uh, development is broader and is the possible activities that the employee can undertake to learn more about their role in the business uh, in terms of management in the future, perhaps. The process to be followed requires the establishment of business uh, of, of, of a system. Uh, so we already know that. We know staffing needs from acquisition, followed by training priorities, and then a training and development plan. So this is going from acquisition phase to training. So business requirements, we need these jobs. And before we hire the people, we need to understand their requirements. Um, even though I you know, graduated from university twice, <clears throat> I, uh, nobody ever asked me what I learned there. And they always told me to do it their way. 
they said what you learn in university might be helpful for your thinking and for your understanding, but it doesn't really, you know, we want to define how you do your job and how we train you. So, uh, the training priorities, what's important, and then a development plan. <clears throat> um, just to follow through on this, business requirements, the human, I'm on 110 now. The human resource manager needs to consider the organizational goals. That's a very big responsibility, HR manager. And where staff training can assist in attaining these goals. In a school like ours, we'll have assistants come from Australia usually once a year. <clears throat> They'll send someone here to review with the teachers uh, some uh, improvements in the procedures and understanding of the, of the syllabus and content. They will consider whether targets are being met, the response of customers to current levels of service and satisfaction levels of employees in the workplace. <clears throat> Some areas of the business might benefit from staff training because of the quality of the product or service can be improved or efficiency or production processes increased. The businesses should have KPIs in their training so you can build up maybe your status in the company by taking more training courses. Some companies have optional courses that uh, employees who really want to improve can take. Uh, staff requirements. So what is necessary to complete the job? <clears throat> uh, you have to determine that over time. I mean, how many? Four weeks seems like a long induction for me, but uh, I guess it makes sense. It's like one month. <clears throat> Uh, some companies you might be able to get started with the job more quickly. Maybe some other jobs it takes longer uh, time. Staff's current knowledge and skills should then be compared to what is required in terms of knowledge and skills if there's updates. <clears throat> this happens when there's uh, new technology introduced to the, into the organization. Uh, again, um, we had some emails and a few, like one little session about how to use Google Classroom and things like that, but most of it we, we didn't really, we had to kind of figure out <clears throat> ourselves. Training priorities. The manager can then identify specific training courses or on-site experience needs for the staff members and they can either hire people who can train from inside the company who have experience in the company or sometimes, if you're going to introduce a new system like Classroom, you might want to hire someone from Microsoft or Google or whatever company that is to come in and actually show off what their software can do. So sometimes there are companies that have training departments so you know how to use their products. So you can sometimes, so training can happen internally with experienced staff or externally with the service provider to the company. Uh, and then you have a plan and then the first step is a detailed outline of the courses and training chosen, <clears throat> its location, dates, and the employees who will participate and everybody gets scheduled for the training, whether it's on-the-job training, simulation, some case studies, maybe there's some uh, accountants uh, jobs where you have to do case studies and uh, or, or just review of different elements and materials. <clears throat> I will put this induction video up. <clears throat> uh, of course, there's workplace safety training as well.
this is not bad music. <clears throat> There's a million ways. It depends on the business, which kind of training. Uh, sometimes they call induction orientation. Employment training method. Oh, we said we're going to start. <coughs> semester so we really only have two or three more videos left I'm not sure we're going to be back next week uh, somebody said Friday so I don't know what that means if there is a Friday we'll probably have a test and I will warn you in advance uh, I would say by tomorrow at the latest bye now <clears throat>